Hello world, this is Lisa Fredrickson, your friendly professor at Johnson County Community College. And today we're gonna to talk about style sheets, cascading style sheets. Before we jump into that, however, we need to review some terminology. I've separated my screen into three parts, the HTML, the style sheet, and the resulting web page, just so you can see all of these three things and how they work together. When we start styling, in order to read the instructions carefully and understand what they mean, it's really imperative that you have the terminology of HTML and CSS down. So in comments here, I've added two key terms that you should be solid on in HTML. The first is the word element. Elements are commonly called tags. However, they are technically different. The element is actually the opening tag, the content, and the closing tag. However, you will hear the word tag used to tag or mark up the content more commonly than you'll hear the word element. Another key word for you in HTML to have memorized is the word attribute. An attribute is information about the element and it's entered in the opening tag. So in our opening HTML tag, we have lang equals en, which indicates that the language is English. And in the meta tag, we also have an attribute. Here in the middle panel, we have a very small style sheet. The syntax for cascading style sheets is quite different than HTML. And you can see that by the opening comment. Even the comment syntax is very different. Within a CSS rule, we have three new terms to learn. The first is the selector. The selector determines what will be styled. In this case, we're gonna style the entire body. The rules themselves then go inside of curly braces. And while you can put CSS all on the same line, just as you can HTML, it's a very good idea to break out your selector and each declaration onto their own lines so that you can clearly see the opening and closing brace it's very common to forget one of those characters, in which case your CSS will not work. So the selector determines what will be styled. On each line, we put a declaration. The most common name for a declaration is a rule, but technically that's a declaration. We're declaring what style we want. In this case, we're declaring that we want the background color of the body to be yellow. And we want the color, that's the text color, to be blue. Every declaration then is four parts, starting with a property name. Property names never have spaces. If the property name consists of more than one word, CSS separates those words with dashes. You follow the property by a colon and an optional space, and then the value that you want to apply to that property, all followed by a semicolon. Each one of these parts, the property name, the colon, the property value, and the semicolon are necessary to correctly and precisely build a declaration. So I've got a style sheet. I'm going to save it. I've got an HTML file. It's also saved and I'm gonna refresh my page and nothing is happening. And that's because this style sheet is not connected to the web page yet. To connect it, we come into the head section because remember, the head section contains information about the page. The body section contains all the information on the page. You come into the head section and use this tag, the link tag. The link tag has two important attributes. href tells you what file you're linking to. And we're gonna to link to this style sheet that I've named styles.css. I have put them in the same folder, so there's no folder path prefix here that's necessary. Later on, we'll talk about how to organize our style sheets, our HTML files and our images in different folders and reference them correctly. But for now, we're just gonna put the two files in the same folder for ease. And also the rel attribute, which tells us the relationship of this link to this page. And it's a style sheet. With that tag, with its two required attributes, in the head section of the HTML page, now when I refresh this page, that style sheet has been applied. I can go into the style sheet and change the background color to white for the body section and see that being applied, or I can use hexadecimal numbers 
hexadecimal numbers go from 0 to F, 16 numbers, and they're entered in red, green, blue. So if I wanted a white background, I would go for all red, all green, and all blue. Save, refresh, I got my white background. The yellow background in light is all red, FF, all green, FF, and zero blue. Hexadecimal numbers are a lot more common because they much more precisely define the color than just color names. But I wanted to show you the color name too just to make the style obvious. If I wanted red text, I'd go all red, no green, and no blue. The hexadecimal numbers can be entered in an upper or lower case. That's it for your first lesson on cascading style sheets. Learn the word selector. That's what goes before the curly braces. Declaration is the entire rule. Property is what's before the colon, and value is what's after the colon, followed by a semicolon. Also learn this new tag, this new element, the link element. It has two key attributes to link your external style sheet to your web page. Thank you.